Faramir, a man with high nobility that can match the old kings of men and at the same time inheriting the wisdom and sadness of the elves, a superhuman in the late third age. This description most likely does not match your impression of Faramir, for he's not portrayed like this in the movie adaptations. Tolkien leaves subtle hints that this man is matched by no man in Middle-earth save for Aragorn. In what way was Faramir a superhuman? Did Denethor really dislike Faramir? And why did the movie adaptations ruin a character that deserved much better? This is the analysis of Faramir, son of Denethor. Faramir is a brave man of hope and great wisdom. He is considered fair-minded, merciful, modest and he can read into the hearts of men with pity. He is not interested in warfare, even though he makes for a great leader and a great warrior. He is matched by no rider of Rohan on the battlefield, according to Eowyn the shield maiden. Faramir inherits the blood of Numenor as his father Denethor, and few men in the late Third Age possessed such power. Numenor was the greatest kingdom of men to ever exist, and the men who were of this origin had longer lifespans, were wiser, and built cities of great beauty and wonder. The description of the Numenorians fits Faramir, and in the books we are told that Samwise Gamgee can sense some power in Faramir that reminds him of a wizard. This is after Faramir has shown Sam his resistance to the ring. This is what proves to us that Faramir is special. I would not take this thing if it lay by the highway. Not were Minas Tirith falling in ruin, and I alone could save her. So, using the weapon of the Dark Lord for her good and my glory. No, I do not wish for such triumphs, Frodo, son of Drogo. No man in history, except for Aragorn, had proved to be resistant to the ring's corruptive power. Great men like Isildur and Boromir had fallen astray under the ring's influence. Faramir immediately recognizes that this ring will only fortune the intentions of the Dark Lord. This is where the movie adaptations serve Faramir great injustice. Faramir's special personality is completely neglected in the movies. Instead of being brave, gentle, fair-minded, merciful, modest and wise, he is corrupted, unjust and violent. Instead of treating Frodo, Sam and Gollum with respect, he blackmails Frodo and he makes his men beat Gollum to retrieve information about the ring. This gives quite the opposite representation of who Faramir is and what he stands for. Faramir is alongside Denethor widely misinterpreted because of the changes that were initiated in the movies. Multiple reasons arise for why the movie makers would go with a change like this. To portray the corruptive power of the ring, to show that men and Gondor are weak, to increasingly show Faramir's issues with Denethor, and lastly, it's in accordance with the power shift in Middle-earth. Helm's Deep is about to fall, the Ents have rejected to intervene with Middle-earth's fate, and Faramir is about to take the ring to Minas Tirith. It looks like Middle-earth is doomed. And then, suddenly, Gandalf aids Theoden, the Ents attack Isengard, and Faramir release Frodo and his companions. It's a turning point, and suddenly, the situation in Middle-earth doesn't look too bad. It works out well for the build-up of the movie. On the other hand, was this necessary? I believe the movie makers could have portrayed a weakened Gondor and a Faramir with Denethor issues without ruining Faramir. Faramir is a simple man. He loves lore and music, and he does not care for pride and honor like his father and brother. Whereas Boromir wants to be recognized as a great warrior and hero, Faramir only craves to live a life in peace in the city he loves, Minas Tirith. Boromir takes after his father in the pride and honor perspectives, while Faramir is more like his father in the interest of lore, understanding the minds of others, and having the Numenorean sent. In Gondor, the warriors are esteemed above all, and that is one of the reasons why Denethor preferred Boromir to Faramir. Faramir also displeased his father, the time Skandalf visited the city. 
for Faramir welcomed Gandalf and he searched his wisdom. Denethor had come to mistrust every stranger, except when they served him. He was dissatisfied with Faramir and his dealings with Gandalf, eventually calling him a wizard's pupil. In the movies, this relation is exaggerated, and it looks like Denethor despises Faramir. This portrayal gives the impression that Gondor is in even graver danger and that they are led by a crazy dude who hates his son. Denethor's representation in movies is even more disastrous than Faramir's, but I will not discuss this here, for I have already created a video discussing that topic which you can check out after this video. Denethor is not comforted by Faramir's decisions and interests, and he sees him as a man that could potentially be greater than himself. Denethor doesn't hate his son, he loves him, but it's challenging for him to reveal his affection for Faramir. After Boromir dies, Denethor becomes a grieving man who has lost both his son and wife. Denethor simply pushes Faramir away as he is in too much grief. The movie adaptations play too much on Faramir's issues with his father, resulting in Faramir deciding to bring the ring to his father to please him. Faramir's corruption is explained by the fact that he wants to be recognized by his father. Tolkien's Faramir was far more resolute and more independent than this, and it is painful to watch these scenes after having read the books. On the other hand, sacrifices must be made to accomplish great things, and the Lord of the Rings movies was indeed successful. Faramir finally decides to free Frodo and his companions, and partly, the character is given some justice. Faramir is corrupted, but sees that the ring is evil, and he shows respect for Frodo and Sam. Faramir is a part of the dwindling might of Gondor. He is one that portrays its all glory. He is admired and loved by the people. He inspires and ignites hope. Pippin tells us this. Yet suddenly, for Faramir, his heart was strangely moved with a feeling that he had not known before. He was a captain that men would follow, that he would follow, even under the shadow of the Black Wings. Faramir is evidence of why the Kingdom of Gondor has lasted for thousands of years. Men like him are proof why Gondor has not given into darkness, why it remains, and how they have endured this long shadow. Faramir is whom we all desire to become, a brave, compassionate, humble and understanding human being. Faramir is one that only a few of us become. That is why he is a special character. His leadership is not directed to harvest glory, but rather to preserve what he loves. Like Aragorn, he is a person people would follow, even under terrible conditions. There is more to be said about Faramir as a character, but I am now included the most important aspects regarding his changes. If you believe I have missed out on something, or if you have another perspective, I would love to discuss it with you in the comment section. Remember to leave a thumbs up, subscribe and share the video with your friends if you enjoyed this video. Here are some other interesting videos I would encourage you to check out.